follow your passion. Follow your passion. Follow your passion. Teachers, mentors, instructors, everyone has said this line or some sort of variation about it. And we've all heard it too. Whether you're an 18 year old high school student or a 28 year old marketing professional doing a TED talk. But have you ever thought that we've actually been using this line way too much, that it's lost all meaning? Or the fact that there's actually no result by following your passion? Well, I got some great news for you guys. Because following your passion is dead. It's time to develop it. So this was actually the whole concept of a 2018 Stanford University study. And what they set out to do is try to figure out if saying following your passion is actually still valid. And throughout these five experiments, they found out, nah, it's not going to work out. We should start creating passions. But how do you create a passion? I was always I've always thought that creating a, a passion is something that we can't create. It's something that we've innately loved, or it's something that we grow to like. So how does one create it? And then I read this 40-page Stanford University paper because it's so dry and so boring. I'm not forcing you guys to read it. But what came out of that kind of completely blew my mind because it turns out I actually developed my passion. And I didn't even know it. So before I explain to you guys how I developed my passion, I want to kind of go over uh, what the, one of the experiments to help really hit home what it means to develop a passion. So who here likes black holes like this? Raise your hands here. All right. Not a lot of big fans. All right. So keep your hands up if you like black holes like this. All right. So this was actually a study, or the example of a study that the Stanford scientists did. And what they did is shown these uh, participants a video of a black hole, similar to the left image. And then shortly after, um, a piece of paper that had equations that looked like that. And then what the results were was exactly what happened in this room tonight. Everyone's interests were so high when they were shown a video of a black hole, but the second they got a piece of paper that has all numbers and Greek letters on it, the interest went down. So what does this mean? An interest dies when a challenge arises, but passion thrives. So what these scientists figured out was you can't just like anything enough and have that be your passion. You actually need to put work into it. It's a little bit of a common sense thing if you think about it, but a lot of people do say, hey, follow your passion, follow your passion. Well, these scientists just debunked that whole line, and this is what it means to develop it. In other words, an interest is an interest because we see a challenge as an obstacle. But it's passion when we see a challenge as an opportunity. So growing up, I watched this TV show called Friends. I love this show. I watched this show religiously. If anything, this show taught me how to be an adult. But most importantly, this show inspired me to become an actor. So growing up, I was a young kid, and I'm very energetic, loud, enthusiastic. I love being the center of attention. But most important, I was, there, I was doing it to make people happy. And I think those were great qualities to become an actor. So that's why I kind of just had that in the back of my mind. Be an actor, Joe, and be an actor when you grow up. So high school hit, signed up for drama classes, joined theater club, did everything there, and learned as much as I could about acting. And then it hit me. I was a semester done early high school, so I just had to start applying for post-secondary school, like with most high school graduates out there. 
So because I, was act, uh, I had acting in my mind, I guess you could say that was my passion, I wanted to follow it. So I did some research, looked for some schools, and I found this one school that was on the other side of the country. For a four-year uh, program in acting, I had to pay $60,000. Today's money, that's probably about $70,000. So I was 18, had to move on the other side of the country, and, pay, and had to pay $60,000 in tuition. Do you know what I did? Nah, I didn't do it. <laughs> so I still had to figure out what I had to do after high school. And that's when I thought about doing business school. I had no idea what business was all about. I just thought business was accounting is boring, economics is hard, I hate numbers. I still think that, but now I have an understanding why that is. But I still had acting in the top of my mind. So I was studying business, and I picked up some background acting roles on the side. Some of these roles uh, were really exciting. Some of these roles were kind of boring. But the thing that I wanted to get out of it was to learn more about the industry, to see if I can network with other actors and actresses and see how and what their journey was to get to the point that we, where they are now, or at that time. So the money was great. I saw big paychecks in the thousands. Yes, believe it or not, you get paid thousands of dollars to just sit there in the back. But I started having these different roles, where I had to wake up at 6.30 a.m., haul a bike from one end of the city to the other, using public transit, that took two and a half hours. Twice. In one day. It got tiring, especially when I was going to school. And another uh, role that I had participated in, I had to shave my head bald. To be in a part for five seconds in the far background for a TV show that never got produced. <laughs> I loved my hair. And that's when it hit me. I don't think I want to become an actor anymore. <laughs> all of these challenges, all of these obstacles that I've been going through, it kind of demotivated me. Similar to that whole idea of the black hole example. My interest with acting was high, and then the more challenging uh, algebra stuff came at me, and my interest slowly decreased. So I was still in business school, when this whole thing happened, met some awesome people, met some new friends, and they all kept saying, hey, Jerwin, you should study marketing. And I asked them, why? They said, oh, it's because you're loud, you're enthusiastic, you're energetic, uh, you're really good with people, you, I think you should be like a great salesman. I mean, I completely ignored all that, but I still decided to go through with marketing. And good thing is, I actually graduated, <laughs> with a minor in marketing, or a minor in uh, management, and a major in marketing. So all was good. I graduated, and I felt like I kind of had a, uh, starting to put my life together. But I still didn't really know what I wanted to do after graduating. So I took a year off, clear my head, take a break, earn some money, because when you're going to school six years, in a, or uh, consistently for six years, you kind of want to just take that step back. But within that year, that's when it hit me. Hey, I actually kind of like marketing. So let's continue on with this marketing thing. Now what I'm going to do? OK, find a job. All right, well, the job market is so hard right now. How do I get a job then? I become better. So I tried to become better. And I didn't know how until I did some quick Google searches on how to be a better marketer. Turns out it was really easy. But I took the conventional route and go back to school. I love marketing that much that I went back to school for another year. And that's when everything kind of just blew up in my face. One of the exercises that we were taught was called the brand filter. This was a tool that marketers use to help, brand, uh, help companies create a brand for themselves. Essentially, creating a persona of that company. And one of the exercises that we were taught, or using that tool, we had an exercise 
that we had to do. Answer the five questions that was a part of this brand filter tool. And in five questions, five minutes, that's when it hit me. I developed my passion on a piece of paper using a pencil. Yes, I'm still old school like that, guys. After tonight, I urge everyone to do this test. If not, let's do it right now, actually. I'll walk you guys through all these questions uh, that I ask myself. So, developing your passion is similar to developing a brand. If everyone here could kind of imagine what a brand is, you could probably kind of pick certain qualities or characteristics of your favorite brand. Well, let's do that for yourself. So the first question up there, the most important one, is motivation. What is your motivation? What is your why? My why is to change the world with marketing. Yeah, that's a big why. But it could be that big or it could be this small. It doesn't matter. As long as you have a why, that is the first step. Second, defining what your purpose is. What do you think that you can do as an individual to help bring a community together? And no, I'm not talking about your neighborhood or you know, your work friends. It's what do you want to bring together? For me, I believe my purpose is to teach and learn about marketing. Everything I can, anything I can. The last three, about your values, your personality, and the behavior that you want to have to, or that you'd like to portray. Those are kind of what the exterior stuff is. But ask yourself, what do you value? Well, I value learning. I'm not saying I want to be a nerd, I'm just saying I would like to learn everything because I value knowledge. I also value relationships. I also value the fact that I like working with other people. Personality, well, that's kind of the easy one here, same with how you would act. So the personality that I like to have is someone who's confident, someone who's charismatic, salesy, if you want to define that way. But lastly, how do I want to act? The one word that always stuck to me was to be a leader. So combining all that, that is how I define what my passions are. Can anyone here guess what they think my passion is? So this picture was taken in 2018. I was the keynote speaker for a marketing and branding event. I was in a room full like this of entrepreneurs, business owners, small businesses, small brands, upcoming brands, and they all heard me talk about the same thing marketing. Shortly after, I was asked to be a co-host for a monthly panel talk uh, series where their tagline is literally learning is endless. And then lastly, a couple months after that, I hosted my first workshop about marketing. So I lived out my passion, and it was so easy for me to get those opportunities. And because that is what I was passionate about. It made things a lot more fun. So developing your passion is similar to developing a brand. Forget following your passion because it's a lot more fun creating your own passion. I thought I had a lot of fun with acting, and I thought that was my passion. I thought that was exactly what I was made to do, to entertain, to act in front of a TV screen. But I tried it out, and it wasn't for me, even though I felt like I had everything that I could. And then there was business, something that I never really had an idea with, that all of a sudden, holy crap, Drowin, like, you're so good at this. And then I took that next step and said, okay, what am I going to do with business? Because I spent, you know, $10,000, $15,000 on tuition and, you know, seven years of my life. I had to do something good with it. But the older I got, the more knowledge and experience that I've obtained. Because I defined what my passions were, 
I had no idea I was capable of this. So I invite everyone here tonight, the second you walk out that door, to start thinking about those five questions. It'll help start that internal conversation with yourself, or even better, it might slap you in the face and completely open up your eyes. Thanks, guys. I hope you guys learned anything.